So why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of the limit laws. So if the limit of two functions exists, um, then um, the limit of f of x plus f of g um, exists. What I want to friendly remind you is like keep your ways we can combine functions like adding them, subtracting them, uh, multiplying them um, in mind as you approach these problems. So if I have the limit as f of x minus 4 approaches 2 and the limit as uh, x approaches 2 of 1 half x plus 2, I can evaluate both of these in order to add them together. Important to note that the limit needs to be approaching the same constant. So my limit as x goes to 2 of 5x minus 4, I'm going to be plugging in 2. So I have 5 times 2 minus 4, which is 10 minus 4, which is 6. And then I have my limit as x goes to 2 of 1 half x plus 2. We're going to substitute in 2. I get 1 half times 2 um, plus 2 is going to give me 3. So the limit, if I was to add these functions, which would be um, the limit of uh, x goes to 2 of 5x plus 1 half x is 5 and a half x. So that's 11 halves x minus 2 equals the sum of these together, 6 plus 3, which is 9. Because if we plugged in 2, you'd see we'd have 11 halves times 2 minus 2. Well, 11 times 2 and halves times 2 is just going to be 11, and 11 minus not, 2 is a positive 9. So that's our sum law. Now, if I have two functions, um, I can also break them apart into their little pieces. So I could say this is the function. Um, the limit of x goes to 2 of x cubed plus the limit of x goes to 2 of 5x. You see I'm pulling this polynomial apart. Plus the limit as x goes to 2 of 7. This could make it a little bit easier to evaluate, right? So I know my limit of my first term. If I plug in a 2, I'm going to have 2 cubed, which is 8 plus 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 7, because it's a constant. So I'd have 8 plus 10 plus 7, which is 25. Now, the constant multiple law says that if k is any real number, then the limit of, um, then k times the limit of a function is the same as the limit of k times a function. So for this example, uh, the limit as x goes to 3 of x squared plus 1, we're going to be plugging in 3 squared plus 1, so we get 10, okay? It's telling me this is going to be the same, so then this would be 3 times that, which is 30. But what if I go ahead and distribute? So what if I have the limit as x goes to 3 of multiplying by 3, 3x squared, I don't know why I put an equal sign there, sorry guys, 3x squared plus 3. Well, I can go ahead and substitute. I've got 3 times 3 squared plus 3, which is 27 plus 3 equals 30. So as you can see, these are equivalent. The product law um, says if the limit of two functions exists, then if I multiply them together, their limit is the same as those two functions multiplied together. So in order to evaluate this, instead of having to multiply everything out, I can take the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 1 and the limit of 3x squared minus 9 
because x goes to 2. So I can go ahead and substitute in for those. So this would give me times this. So that would give me 2 plus 1 times 3 times 2 squared minus 9. That gives me 3 times 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 9 is 3. And my final answer is 9. And if you went through and foiled out these two uh, binomials, you would see if we take the limit of that newly expanded polynomial, you would get the same answer. We also have a quotient law. If I take the limit of a function over the limit of another function, that's the same as the limit of those rational functions. So here I can take the limit as x goes to 1 of x minus 6 over the limit as um, x goes to 1 of 2x to the 4th. That gives me negative 7 over... Um, Oh, it's negative 1. Okay, 2 times negative 1 to the 4th, which is just 2. So I have negative 7 halves. Our power rule says that if I take a limit and raise it to a power, that's the same as if I took um, a, the limit of a function raised to a power. So let's say I have the limit as x goes to 4 of x to the 3 fourths. I could rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 4 of x all to the 3 fourths. So the limit as x goes to 4 is 4, so I'd have 4 to the 3 fourths. So let's do another example with the power um, and root laws. So again, remember that taking the square root is the same as raising something to the one half power. So that means I can pull out the square root. So now I can have the square root of the limit as x goes to two of x cubed plus four x plus four. That's gonna be two cubed plus four times two plus four, which is eight plus eight plus four, which isn't 16. Um, it's actually the square root of 20, which we could pull apart to two square root of five. Um, another example, this is the same as the limit as x goes to one of x minus three squared. So we can go ahead and take the limit as x goes to one. So I've got the limit uh, that's going to be negative 1 minus 3 squared. So I have negative 4 squared. Sorry, it's a positive 1. 1 minus 3, that's a negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So next I want to talk about what to do when we have a limit with an indeterminate form. And an indeterminate form is 0 over 0. Um, the first thing we want to do is we need to make sure that our function has the appropriate form and that it can't be evaluated by the laws we already have in place. We then need to find an equivalent function by using the following steps. One, um, if it's a rational function and both functions are polynomials, we should factor um, each polynomial and get rid of any common factors. Second, if the numerator or denominator contains a difference involving a square root, we should multiply by the conjugate. And if it's a complex fraction, we need to go ahead and simplify it. We can do that by multiplying by the um, LCD. <clears throat> so let's take a look at a few examples. So I want to take the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 3x over 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now, this would not work because if I have substituted in 3, I will have a denominator of 0. Same thing with the top, I have a numerator of zero. So what I need to go ahead and do is I need to factor this. So I'm gonna pull out, I've got x on my numerator over x minus three, and then I need to go ahead and factor that numerator. So I'm thinking, okay, what are the factors 
of 6 that add up to negative 5. So that gives me 2x squared. Sorry, the factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 5. 2x squared minus 6x plus x minus 3. Then I can go ahead and factor by grouping. So I have x over x minus 3. Um, that's going to give me 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. So I've got a common term here I can factor out. That leaves me with x over 2x plus 1. I can then use my limit laws. So I have the limit as x goes to 3 of x over 2x plus 1 is 3 over 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 3 over 7. And that crying in here is my cat. She's making an appearance in our calculus videos for the first time. Welcome. Her name's Bobby. Um, I'll post her picture later. So again, let's look at this example. In this example, I have the square root of x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 1. And what I need to do is I need to multiply, in this case, by the conjugate. So the conjugate of this would be the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. And why I'm not going to have the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. That's going to leave me with x plus 1 over x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 2 minus 1. That gives me 1 over the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. So I get 1 over. Um, oops. So now I can go ahead and take my limit. So I have the limit as x goes to negative 1 of the square of 1 over the square root of x plus 2 plus 1 equals 1 over the square root of negative 1 plus 2 plus 1, which gives me 1 over um, the square root of 1 plus 1. So I have 1 over 1 plus 1, so I have 1 half. So that would be my limit. So in this example, I have a complex fraction, and what I need to do oops, is multiply our numerator and our denominator uh, both by the lowest common denominator of these two fractions, which would be 2 over x plus 1. That gives me, I'm going to get um, 2 times x plus 1 times 1 over x plus 1 would give me 2 minus x plus 1 over x minus 1 times x plus 1 times 2. That means I have 2 minus x minus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 1, all that times 2. And I'm not fully multiplying those together because I want to keep them factored. That gives me um, negative x plus 1 over 2 times x minus 1, x plus 1. That also gives me, I can pull out a negative, so I have negative x plus 1, sorry, minus 1. Over 2 times x minus 1, x plus 1. So these two terms cancel out, so I'm left with negative 1 over 2 times x plus 1. Now I can take my limit. That gives me negative 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1, which is going to give me negative 1 fourth as our limit. 